Alright, I just want to go over some beginner basics here while I'm watching the ladies work before I open up the top. Um, first of all, the few things you're going to need if you ever plan on trying to do this. What you're going to need is what the bees need. Um, first of all, you certainly don't need a lot of land to do it. I mean, all I have is this small backyard, and even that's not even totally what you need. Because bees don't know property lines, so they'll find the food and they will fly off and bring it on back. Um, there's a ton covered in, covered with pollen now. It's all multicolored, we'll get a little closer. But um, they need sunlight or heat, they need water, and they need flowers or sugar water. <clears throat> so, as far as the sunlight goes, the more they get, the more productive they're gonna be. Um, unlike plants and stuff like that really if these guys could get or ladies I should say could get sunlight from dawn till dusk uh, that would be just fine with me because the thing is they need to heat up to something I want to say it's about 105 degrees even it's warm but in the morning when they get into work they have to beat their wings to do that and uh, work up uh, basically work up a sweat before they can get to work really so if the sun's shining on them bright and early, it's much easier for them to warm up and it's much easier for them to get going. At the same time, late in the day when the sun's going down, if the box stays warm and it's easy for everybody to stay warm and keep working late, they'll do just that and keep working late. So you want as much sunlight as you possibly can. Um, they're going to want a water source nearby because of course they need that too and they need it a lot. And that's one of the few things that they just need merely to survive. They don't necessarily use it a lot in the hive or anything. You know, they're not exactly spraying water everywhere, but they do need to drink. That one's pretty simple. I just even put a plate of water over there just in case. Um, they'll use that one's kind of floating around over there now. And then a couple of dead ones to clean out, but they'll use that. And the third thing they need, of course, is food. And that they always need. That's going to be the big driver to keep them around. Um, you can put sugar water in the hive, but they won't want to stick around just off of what you feed them. They are going to need flowers around to work on too. But again, they don't know property lines, so they don't necessarily have to be your flowers. They just have to be in the area. We have a park nearby. We have a lot of flowers. We're in a suburban neighborhood, so we do have a lot of flowers in the area. But you can supplement it with sugar water too. As far as actually starting the hive, for this single box ran me a little more expensive than usual, um, but there's only two places around here really to get it. At one place, it, this this whole setup would have would have cost me about I, I want to say it was like it was about two hundred and twenty-five dollars. And at the other place, it would have cost me about 125 So definitely shop around. Um, one place is, you know, has the overhead of being open all day, and the other one, you basically make an appointment and go pick your stuff up so he doesn't have to charge an employee, so it's much cheaper. Anyway, um, as far as what the hive itself needs, if you can see, I don't know if you can see in there, but this has a screen bottom which is very important. You can see it kind of on the floor, right at the opening there, there's a screen in there. That's important for two things, for airflow, and if it rains and water starts running into this door, it's gonna run right underneath through that screen. And all the junk comes through on this tray in the back. That's all leftover wax, so you know, they'll, they'll collect all that and reuse it. But that promotes airflow and it basically has that trash tray. See if I can hold a little better. Okay, just slides out. I have duct tape on the end because earwigs actually like to go live in that tray. There's little there's little slots in there, and earwigs will go in there overnight. So I duct tape the end. But that is good for airflow, and it'll let any water run out. Because if the bees go on the ground in here, <coughs> inside the hive, and there's water all over it everywhere, and they think they're going to flood, guess what? They're moving out. So it is very good to have that. Um, the important thing to remember is you need the most sunlight, but you also need the most sunlight and the door to be facing south. In the northern hemisphere, the door faces south. In 
the southern hemisphere, the door faces north. Oh wait, did I say that right? I might have said that backwards, so I'll say it again. In the northern hemisphere, you need the door to face south. In the southern hemisphere, you need the door to face north. We're in the northern hemisphere, so it has to face south, and the reason for that is very simple. The sun rises east to west, and as the season changes, the sun goes down over the southern sky. So basically, that's going to keep the sun on the front. And the reason that's important is because in the morning, what they do is one or two bees will come out and they'll take a peek around and feel around, try to warm up and, you know, they'll say, all right, it's good, we can go get to work. They'll start looking around, come back, tell the other bees where to go look for food and then, you know, they'll basically be the wake-up crew to get everybody going. If they're in the shade all day, that wake-up crew is going to come out and say, too cold, go back in. Come out again, say, too cold, go back in. Basically, you'd have to wait for the box to cook enough for the bees to have to leave. So the door always has to be facing the sun as much as possible. Just look, I can see tons of them coming in with a whole bunch of pollen. Which is awesome. Queen's been loose for a while now, so I'm dying to get in there. So yeah, that, that's definitely what they need. They need food. Of course, they need heat and they need water. Those are those are the three three most important things that you need for them to basically be able to sustain. <laughs> there is a whole a whole lot more learning about these things. And I will tell you if you are thinking about doing it, um, a for the 2018 season, it's mostly too late. Most most vendors have already filled up their trucks and the road of the bees, so you probably can't now. But that's a good thing because you really should take a year of homework. Um, a lot of people recommended bee school to me and I, in all honesty, didn't do it just because everybody said take bee school, but when you have questions, you can ask me. So one thing I will say is, you know, do the bee school thing if you want, but if not, try to find people that will help you out because that that is huge and i do i mean i have a few i have a beekeeper right next door you know who uh who is from uh, chile and is, who's been doing this for over a decade and a customer who's been doing this for a couple of years now so even i have a few people i can talk to um and that is it is very important to have that kind of network because the more you start looking into how much these things actually work it, they really are amazing but they really are complex too and they are finicky queen can sit here and decide to up and leave while I'm recording this and I'll be able to do nothing but stay in here and watch and hopefully follow her and bring her back but you have to give them a happy home or else they're not going to want to stay there so I'm going to pop the top of this thing and uh, let them calm down a little bit after I do and get ready to stop poking around for the queen back in a bit